Hey guys, this is me Rachit and welcome to yet another video. It's been quite a long time that I've been active on YouTube. I was getting settled in my new life and I hope to be more active now. Um, today I'll be discussing about Google Code Jam and so this time the Google Code Jam was really really very easy. Like the first three problems were too easy to solve and I think people when they are in university or something they really don't do code jam that much because they think that it will be very difficult and we will we are not that much aware of data structures and algorithms and they literally don't do that and to be honest i never did code jam when i was in college i used to do google apac only when i was in i think final year or something i tried it only once in my whole four years just because i thought that I, j I, I won't be able to do it or I don't know I have I have absolutely no idea why I didn't do it and I think it's very much true that uh, as a person you really don't try out a lot of things a lot of new things to be honest just because of some hesitation like we don't know what it is how it is and what it's about so b just because of those things we leave but anyways um, this year's code jam was again fairly very easy let's quickly go through the problems so it was having four problems and I just managed to solve three problems. So um, let's discuss the problems one by one. So the first problem, um, just ignore the long problem statement, sorry about that. But the problem is nothing but that you are having multiple test cases and in each test case, um, and oops, yeah, I think it's better now. So in each test case, you are given a number like 4, 9, 40 and double four double four and what you have to do is for each number given you have to decompose that number into two smaller numbers let's say you're given n so you have to decompose n into x and y so that the sum of x and y is n and the only condition is that any of the numbers from x and y should not contain the digit 4 so as you can see in given inputs every number is having 4 4, 9, 40 and double four, double four. So it's given that the number n which will be given will have the digit 4 and you have to decompose it into two numbers so that they add up to give n but they don't have 4 individually. So to solve this let's take an example. Let's say you are having some number like 1400928442 and we decompose that into two numbers the number itself and 0000. zero, zero, zero. So yeah of course the sum of both of these numbers is equal to this number that we are having right over here and the only downside is that um, this number is not having any fours but this is again having four so this is not right we have to get rid of the fours over here and one fairly easy trick to do that is just replace this by a three and then add one over here so in this case the total will the, the, to, the total for this digit will still be four in the equivalent and none of the numbers will contain four in this way so similarly for these two fours what we are going to do is nothing but make them three and three and in the beneath number we are going to make that one and one so all you have to do is iterate on the given number wherever there is a four just append a one in the underneath number and make that four a three as we have done over here and that's it and then what we have to do is we have to print those numbers so we will print this number one three double oh nine two eight three three two and for this number the only tricky case is that you have to ignore the zero in front of it because that doesn't make sense so you have to print from here so yeah this is what i have done and now let's quickly go through now let's quickly go through the code for that um okay so the problem for uh, so the solution for that as you can see is fairly very easy very small so i'm just taking the number of test cases over here then over here i'm taking the input as string then its size is n and then i'm declaring a vector which is nothing but an array of size n and i am initializing it with zero this is the underlying or beneath number that we are having so this is this vector other is nothing but um, i don't know this yeah this is what we are having initially and now what we do is um, we trade on original number and if it's a 4 we make that a 3 and in the other number we make that a 1 this is what I am doing over here now finally after uh, iterating on the complete string and replacing all the 4s by 3s I can simply print my first number as that particular string because I have now replaced the 4s by 3s regarding the other number the only thing that I have I am doing over here is I am ignoring the prefix of zeros like if like in this case um, so I am ignoring the 0 because I don't want to print that and once I have ignored the zeros, I am just going up to n and then printing those digits. 
So yeah, fairly easy program and you can find the solutions to A, B and C. I mean the first three problems to Google code them in my GitHub repository. Regarding the fourth one, we'll come to that in the end of the video. Okay, so in the second problem, what uh, was given is that you're given a matrix of size n cross n and then you are also given a path that some girl has followed from starting cell which is right over here to the ending cell which is right over here. So there is some girl which has moved in this yellow steps as you can see she went south then east then east then east then south over here as you can see in this direction then a sa then an east and then finally south and she was finally in the lower post and finally she was in the lowermost cell. So this is a path in yellow which is given to us and what we have to do is we also have to take south and east moves and the requirement for us is also that we have to start from the top left cell and reach the bottom right cell and the only condition is that we don't have to follow the same path or have a subset of common path that this girl has followed. So essentially what that boils down is that the blue path is one of the valid moves that we can perform and as you can see and as you can see none of the journey from start till end we have ever crossed we have ever took the same move we might have intersected with her at this position or at this position but we have never took the same move that she has taken if she is taking a move if she is moving from cell X to cell Y, we are never moving from cell X to cell Y. We might be crossing paths with her in between, but we are never having a common path with her. And that's the requirement that we have to fulfill. It's fairly very easy to be honest. And what I did was if she is going south, I just go east. So in this question, you can see a symmetry across the diagonal from the, from the top left cell to the bottom right cell. And I just took advantage of that. So sh we both are starting from the origin and if she moves south, I just take its symmetry and do that operation. So if she is going south, I just go east and if she is going east, I will go south. So that's what I did. Yeah, it's and fairly very easy as you can see straightforward. We are taking multiple test cases for each test case. We are taking the input string and if the present character is S, that means she took a south move. So we are taking an east move. And if she took an east move, we are taking a south move. So this is what I'm doing over here. If she took a south move, I'm just saying that I will take east and then I'm printing P, which is my current move. So